Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So today I'd like to talk about how right to repair has been saving lives for literally over 100 years. There is this idea when it comes to right to repair that, okay, if you want to fix an iPhone or a laptop, fine. But if it's something important like a piece of medical equipment, only the manufacturer should be able to fix it because it is mission critical. And the point that I've pushed back against on this channel many times is the more mission critical the system is, the more important it is that the manufacturer not be the only person that can fix it. This is something we've gone over with videos with professionals in the field of medical equipment repair. I'll leave a link to that down below. This is a gentleman named Better Biomed. He has an awesome YouTube channel discussing this type of stuff. And this is something that the FDA has gone over in its own reports. This is from May 2018, FDA report on the quality, safety, and effectiveness of servicing medical devices. And I quote from the report, the continued availability of third-party entities to service and repair medical devices is critical to the functioning of the U.S. healthcare system. And today I'd like to give you an example from Tramps and Ladies, My Early Years in Steamers by Sir James Bissett from 1959. What the hell does this have to do with right to repair? Well, there is an excerpt in this that was discussed in a video on YouTube by Ocean Liner Designs, which I will link down below. Thank you very much for the tip. And in this video, this gentleman shows a picture of a Marconi radio and talks about the fact that Jack Phillips was told he is not supposed to fix the radio himself. He is supposed to wait for the ship to dock and then have somebody from the manufacturer come out and fix the radio on the ship. However, as we all know, 110 years ago, the Titanic never made it. It never made it to dock at land. It hit an iceberg and then sunk. However, because Jack Phillips decided to disobey the manufacturer and fix the radio himself, they had a radio that they could use to call for help so that some of those people would not freeze, drown, and die. People would have frozen, drowned, and died if this radio didn't work because Jack Phillips didn't fix it if he had listened to the manufacturer. Right to repair literally saved the lives of people on the Titanic going back 100 years ago. And it also demonstrates that even going back so far as 100 years ago, you had manufacturers that would say, we're the only ones who should be allowed to fix our stuff. So just a kudos here to Jack Phillips for really believing in the tenets of right to repair and deciding, screw the manufacturer, I'm going to fix your radio anyway, because doing that literally saved lives. The more important a system is, the more important it is that it be able to be repaired in a flexible manner because the manufacturer is not always going to be able to come to the rescue to fix that piece of equipment. Sometimes their turnaround may not be good. Sometimes there may not be a manufacturer technician on staff. Sometimes they may not be available and sometimes they may not have the parts. And when they don't have the parts or the availability or the technicians to be able to do it, if somebody else can make that repair, even if they don't do it exactly the way the manufacturer did it, they may literally be saving lives. Just a point that I thought would be worthwhile to bring up here. And thank you very much to Ocean Liner Designers. Thank you very much to Jay Atwell for emailing this to me. And thank you very much to Sir James Bissett for documenting this in this memoir that I'll link down below so that 110 years later, I can use it as a piece of propaganda for right to repair. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.